Hello. Um, this is just going to be a short little ponder about um, reconstructions, historical and archaeological reconstructions. Um, this won't be about linguistics, but I'll do a, I'll probably do a linguistic equivalent to it at some point in the, uh, in the near future. Um, but it's just about the sort of problems with reconstructions and presenting them to the public, um, uh, and things like that. So, imagine you're a, a paleontologist and you discover uh, a new animal, and you're going to present it um, in a sort of magazine article and you hire a paleo artist to um, create an artwork of the animal as it might have been when it was alive so they'll um, they'll do a painting or they'll do a sculpture or something as the as the animal might have been when it was alive um, if you are the artist or if you're Jesus Christ if you are the artist or if you're a writer writing a bit of fiction set in prehistory or in history uh, or something like that, you're going to have to fill in the gaps in our um, collective knowledge about that time period uh, and about the things and the people you're describing, you're writing about, you're painting. Um, in the case of a, a paleo artist drawing an animal or painting an animal, you might not know what colour the animal was. Um, in some cases, with, with, with certain species of dinosaurs, we have actually got preserved melanosomes which can tell us um, quite a lot about the colour of the animal when it was alive, but uh, in most cases that's not true. So, you, you know, in a lot of cases you don't know what, what the patterning on the animal was. You can speculate... You can speculate um, based on modern animals that occupy the same sort of ecological niches. So if, uh, if it's a pride animal that, you know, a social animal that sort of lives in the savannah, it might be a similar colour to a lion or something like that. Um, but really that's that's extrapolating and it might it, it, you know there's some validity in it but um, it's it's a case of sort of telling I think telling the viewers or telling the people looking at the painting this is not necessarily um, the right color scheme you know for species of animals that are particularly far removed from those that exist today we don't know how the fat and the muscle would have uh, would have would have been distributed on their bodies um, although we can we can come up with a decent idea of it based on um, muscle attachments in the bones and things like that. If you think about more um, what I, what kind of thing I'm I'm interested in, like Australopithecines, um, early Homo and things like that, we we don't you know a lot of reconstructions of Australopithecines have very thick fur, like a chimpanzee, um, but um, a lot of the academic literature that I've read and I've not read a great chunk of it, to be fair, um, seems to lean towards the idea that a lot of our body hair was lost when we became bipedal. It's associated with bipedality. Um, now, those interpretations might be wrong, but um, that would suggest Australopithecines probably did not have an enormous amount of body hair. Um, which, to be fair, modern, more recent reconstructions are sort of reflecting, um, like Kennis and Kennis, um, people like that. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a factor of, you know, any, any kind of soft tissue thing, like um, the, the faces of Australopithecines as well, there's, there's a certain amount of debate as to what extent having eye whites is useful in social interaction. So, the, you know, there's a, um, a lot of diversity in modern ape species in terms of how... Um, much of a contrast there is between the white of the eye and the uh, iris and the pupil. Um, and I think there's, there's um, some suggestion that that might be um, a factor in certain corvid species as well. Um, these things don't preserve in the fossil record. Um, in terms of Neanderthals, there's, there's serious debate as to whether they talk to each other, if they did talk to each other, how much of that would have been supplemented by other forms of communication? Would it have been anything like our speech? Um, you know, would it have had the same pitch and timbre as our speech? I'm sure we've all seen the video of the man shrieking. Um, um, and other aspects of their behaviour, like how they would have decorated themselves or whether they would have decorated themselves. I think at this point it's difficult to deny they must have had artistic inclinations. Um, it's, 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 it's beyond doubt that they would have had cultural differences between a different, you know, different groups, probably quite significant ones in the way they presented themselves aesthetically, and the way they behaved, uh, the way they communicated, the way they spoke if they did speak. Um, one thing people argue about a lot is were, were 
Neanderthals light-skinned? Do they have red hair? Um, and I think this is a mischaracterization. I think Neanderthals um, were on this planet twice as long as we have been so far, depending on where you draw the line on Homo sapiens. Um, and it tends to be, although they, don't, they didn't occupy as large a range as we now occupy, um, genetic diversity tends to be greater the longer a population has been in a given place, rather than the bigger an area it occupies. So I would suggest Neanderthals probably had more population diversity than we do today. Um, although, I, again, I could be wrong, there might be other factors involved there. Um, but to suggest that um, all Neanderthals had the same skin tone, all Neanderthals had the same hair colour, I think is, is as ridiculous as suggesting a modern human, that any two modern humans must have the same skin tone or hair colour. Um, a lot of people still imagine them as big, sort of hefty, lumbering, uh, cultureless um, things or people. Um, and I, there, there is a trend away from that in, in reconstructions um, in terms of sort of body paint and even feathers being worn. I know there's, there's evidence of Neanderthals of Gibraltar and other sites um, plucking the feathers from birds without actually butchering the birds for, for consumption, suggesting they might have been using them for decoration, they might have been using them for any number of things. Um, but it's, you know, it's good to portray them as creatures with culture and body decoration and emotion um, but at the same time, you don't know how they would have expressed that emotion and you don't know how that, that body decoration would have manifested itself. Um, so any reconstruction that tries to factor that in, which I, th I think it is good to factor it in because, um, because then it gives people an idea of, oh, these were people with culture. Um, but you've got to make it up completely, basically. I mean, we know what ochres they had uh, access to. Uh, we know the feather thing, they might have used feathers for decoration. But apart from that, all we really have to go on is, is the diversity of modern human body modification and uh, body painting and things like that. So you're, you're basically making something up. So it's important, I think, to note for a given Neanderthal skull, it's absolutely, you know, the, the number of possible faces that person might have had, the number of possible decorations they might have adorned themselves with, um, that range cannot be presented in a single image of uh, a reconstructed face and I think that's important to either point out or to maybe make a, a range of uh, different possibilities you know for each for a, for a given reconstruction which is very it's a pain in the ass um, it's 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 very complicated um, there are a lot of a lot of problems associated with it um, take the most recent Baldrick video even um, I'll talk about the language aspect at another time. Um, the clothing was fairly minimal and easy, and that was deliberate, firstly because I, you know, didn't want to spend too much, and secondly because, you know, any, any person would have had a linen tunic, you know, it's not hard to do. And the, the trousers were actually linen as well. I know people said they looked like jeans from a distance, but they were, they were in fact linen. Um, it was set in a natural environment. Um, even things as subtle as head movements and facial expressions, um, we all have the same broad range of, of facial expressions, but you know, mannerisms and the way people walk, the, these things have 